My dad says that I wanted to play guitar when I was four. I started with acoustic guitar and then it evolved into sneaking into the garage and playing my dad's Duesenberg and uh, plugging into his amp. And I, I don't know, it just felt like there was so much room to grow with the guitar. And I could, I could be a couple different artists with that one instrument, meaning that, you know, there were so many different lanes I could explore in. And I loved that. I loved the endless possibility of that. And it still excites me to this day. I, I've, I've not gotten tired of it yet. When I stand back, I see a little clearer now. When I'm not staring right at a pixelated picture. Pin It Down was kind of um, a different angle on talking about a relationship. Uh, instead of a relationship falling apart, I wanted to talk about the little um, arguments you get in uh, in a healthy relationship. Uh, so it's kind of talking about a partner uh, pointing out a blind spot in, in their partner. And this person basically denying like, 
uh, I don't see it. I don't know what you're talking about. And so that's kind of where the, the line, I can't pin it down, comes from. Is this person constantly denying it and at the end they're they're finally like, okay, I get it, I'll admit it, you know? I've, I've definitely been these things that you've named. I wanted to, to try my hand at finding a different way to talk about relationships. It's in C standard, so it's like a half step above baritone level. And I was trying to finish another song in C and I, I still haven't finished this song. Um, but I was trying to finish it and then I was like, I'm gonna switch instruments, just maybe give myself some inspiration. And this song was also in C. So then when I put on the other guitar and tuned it way down, um, the riff, I don't know, I kind of found it and I wanted to feel anything else than, than what this song that I was trying to finish was making me feel. So suddenly it came about. I mean, I, I write a lot of songs that way where I'm intending to finish one that's that's been a bear to wrangle and then I end up writing a different one. I was, you know, very into open tunings and that was um, a cool way for me to get out of the boxes that I kind of build for myself creatively and the second that I tr kind of connected the dots of putting this open tuning um, to an electric guitar, I felt like I was able to find a unique um, way to, to, to play it. That, I feel like that's when I started to think a little bit more critically about the way I was constructing my songs as far as gu guitar went. Um, and when that happened, it made me feel like I was, I was very much considering my, my interpretation now. It wasn't just like, how can I sound like X artist or this person because I think we're, we're all you know inspired by by our favorite artists so it, it was it was a process for me to kind of um, shed some of those layers but I think probably around then was when I felt like okay I think I'm I think I have something of my own close to the time that I picked up a guitar I started to write so around age eight and nine, I started to write songs and knew that I loved that, but, um, you know, it's really easy to get in your own cycles and kind of start repeating yourself. And for me, when I was given my first Beatles record, it was game over. Like, it just cracked. So many, um, I think, levels of writing opened for me, you know? It, it was permission to do something that was maybe in my head, but I was like, I don't know if that's good. I don't know if I should try that. I was actually graduating high school and my friend Tyler gave me Abbey Road and Rubber Soul as a gift. And I was a cookie delivery girl at the time. And um, I, I, as I put the disc in, I was so just stunned at Come Together that I let all the cookies melt and I brought them to the, um, to the market and I got in big trouble and I tried to use, but the Beatles as an excuse and she didn't care. <laughs> so um, yeah, the Beatles got me into a lot of trouble but they did more good than bad. <laughs> I'm talking to you. Looks like it falls all at once. Looks like it breaks from the touch. But slowly you let. Gotten to you. 
Yeah, I, I wrote that song uh, because I was going to open for this um, duo that I was a huge fan of. They're both like just incredible, mu revered musicians in LA. And I, they asked if I would open solo. And so I was like, I want to write a song that could exist in a way that's like, oh, there's a drummer, a bass player, and a guitar player playing together, but without the drummer and the bass player. So. I wrote that that song for the gig and um, I just think it's fun because it I can take that wherever I go and it feels like I've got a band a band you know Something sure, something you can hold, something secure. I've seen your eyes knocking, turn from the door. Tell me what it is you're looking for. If you need some. Can't believe 
Something to believe in. That was a song that I um, kind of found the meaning to as I was going. I had the 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 chorus. If you need something to believe in, you can believe in my love. And everything else was kind of like um, hammering it out of myself, trying to like figure out what does this mean? It's beautiful. But what does it mean? And um, I think it eventually kind of meant to me like it was a song for for my now husband um sort of a declaration of like i am not perfect and definitely going to to fail you can you can rest assured um on that but i'm gonna uh also continue to keep trying i'm never gonna stop trying to be be what you need it's kind of a sad love song kind of like i've always been attracted to the like troubadour folk singer, you know, who just like, you know, bears their soul <laughs> uh, through through pen and paper. Like I, I, there's something, people like Dylan, like Joni, they have this, um, I don't know, there's something about it that feels so, so freeing to listen to, but also like, I'm always like, oh, I just wanna be that. Like, I just wanna just be a songwriter. And, but there's this other side that I feel drawn to, which is like, I don't know. I just think guitar players are awesome too. So, I'm I'm. I feel like my main job is to find a way to to merge those things together and to not let myself necessarily get carried away in in one direction or the other. Because um, it feels like I'm very much myself when I'm in the middle of those two things, riding the fader, as they say. <laughs> the other beautiful part about songwriting, I think, is that you get to be a character. There's a few songs that I've written maybe that I'm like, that's a little hard. I mean, am I that angry? I don't know if I'm that angry, really. But I like to I like to sing that angry and feel angry sometimes. And so um, maybe in that sense, it's like putting on a costume sometimes where you're like, I'm gonna be um, a little more aggressive <laughs> with, with this one. Give me something good to do. Write me a line to say. Just give me someone I could be If I'm always standing in the way Or am I just a paper doll Looking for a pair of scissors That won't cut me into something small But cut me free from the danger Sometimes I feel like quitting And beg that someone do Is that too 
big a favor Through that apprehension Cause I'm inside good behavior I don't care what you wanna know Let me show you to the door You give me the disease, now you're selling me the cure Trouble Found Me was right when I had gotten signed to um, my label. I was just kind of under a lot of stress in trying to write a ton of songs and I wanted them all to be good and anyway I just felt really like under the wire and like I was gonna implode. Uh, and so this this song Trouble um, is a character uh, and that character is like sort of a, a critic or fear itself. So I'm singing to this, this thing called anxiety or whatever uh, and, and telling it to kind of get lost. And it helped me during that time a little bit to have a song that was that like aggressive and forward. It gave me a little bit of peace, I guess. I care so much about the song and what the song is saying because that's what um, that's what s sticks with people um, forever. If you can write something that is relatable or a window into someone else's life, or it, or if it can like offer someone words to explain what they what they couldn't explain, I think that's a that's amazing. And I think we get to do that as artists to to find a, another way and to tell a story, the collective story of um, what it is to be human. You know. It can be a wonderful tool in that sense. 